Hello everyone, this is BJ. Welcome to Save Your Dollars. I hope you are enjoying the content. I've been waiting for a while to make this video. Finally, I found a good company to do the research. The company is a Spartan Nash company. They are into grocery and grocery distribution. They are, they are probably only one company which does both grocery uh, retail and grocery distribution. I believe this is a very good long-term hold, mainly from their fundamentals, but from strategic analysis point of view, it has a lot of growth potential. Stay tuned till the end to find out the details. Also, please don't forget to like, share and subscribe if you find this video help you save your time and uh, in turn, save your dollars. Now let's get into the details. I do the analysis in uh, four aspects, strategic, management, technical and financials. The most important uh, for me is the financial analysis in which I look at the company's current um, valuations and uh, the debt uh, or the solvency uh, issues. Other than that, there are a few key aspects that I'm really interested in. Um, I'll go over into the details, but this is a template I'm going to use uh, for uh, my stock analysis in the future so, so that we can be a more uh, systematic and uh, have a quick snapshot. Uh, so the company we are looking at, as I mentioned, is Spartan Nash. Uh, current price is $18.89. Um, and the CEO or the new CEO is Tony Sir Sam. He took uh, in charge in September or October 2020. So uh, from the strategic analysis point of view, the main thing that uh, you would see is uh, how, what, is the, uh, what is their strategic advantage or uh, the product offering or the business that uh, they they can sustainably um, maintain. So they are into grocery and food distribution. Their moat, I believe, is the is the established uh, grocery chains and the distribution network that they've been involved for a long time. Some of their grocery chains are hundred years old. Um, they're fairly small in uh, grocery store presence, but um, they are with a history and uh, landmark positions. So I believe every grocery store. Um, chain has a uh, very good network effect and also uh, it, their involvement with the um, local uh, local presence um, has a mode for people to change a grocery store is going to be difficult especially with the low profit margins any new entrance to enter and take away business in an existing location will be difficult the longevity of the product offering groceries are here to stay and uh, they are the essentials and if you if there is a grocery store uh, well run in your neighborhood and you've been uh, used to it you probably keep going to them uh, for the fresh food product innovation scope this is uh, this is really difficult to say but uh, it is definitely possible uh, when it comes when it comes to uh, their current um, product distribution uh, cap capacity versus their competitor which is a cisco which which almost um, which is almost 90 95% of the business in the food distribution is held by uh, Cisco so compared to that uh, Spartan mission uh, Spartan Nash can uh, increase their business and one of the thing I would believe is to adapt to uh, new um, distribution vehicles is or EV vehicles or uh, <coughs> or uh, new distribution channels which is through Amazon involvement in the company can can come up with something new uh, which I which I'm not totally accounting, but there is always a chance. Scope for a revenue growth. Um, so it all depend, it's all going to depend upon how much uh, um, expansion they are going to have with the Amazon involvement. Um, but even if they are going to continue the way they are right now, uh, the way they are trying to reduce their debt and um, the diluted shares, I think they have a good growth potential. But it is, uh, I still consider it a low to medium. The market trend, um, there is nothing exciting here. It's a uh, gross chair at the end. Um, it is going to depend upon the uh, uh, number of, you know, the population uh, and the spending power of the population and the inflation uh, mainly. So we can consider this a slow growth, but still an existing business. But if they can, uh, if they can actually take away business from other businesses, which are currently holding a major uh, major share in the market, like Cisco, they have very good room for improvement. Um, management analysis: the insider ownership is very low; it's under one percent. Uh, 
I would highly prefer a company with high insider ownership, but nevertheless, uh, this is not bad. If you see the institutional ownership is very high, that shows uh, uh, good confidence from the institutionals. Um, I didn't show a graph here, but actually uh, from October 2020, after the new CEO joined, the institutional ownership started increasing. So that's a good sign that institutions are uh, adding up the shares. Another reason is probably the stock price is at the lowest in the last couple of years. Um, I don't see a great uh, um, presence of uh, uh, the CEO uh, in the social media. Uh, when I searched about this CEO and this company, there's not like a great followership for the CEO, which is not bad and not that great either. Um, and there are no outstand outstanding risk or fraud cases. When you do the Google search, um, I didn't find anything that is uh, compelling to worry about. Management social impact, again, there is no, uh, no one from the management uh, other than the CEO has any uh, great social um, uh, influencing. Recent major news includes Amazon's involvement. Amazon uh, has bought warrants to up to 50% uh, of the company uh, at a price of $17.73 for the next seven years. So if they, want, if they exercise, the company will be owned by Amazon up to 15%. The technical analysis, um, RSA is fairly neutral. Um, RSA above 70 is considered overbought. There is a good chance there is a small short-term reversal in the price. Uh, when the RSA is below 30, there's a good chance that, uh, again, the price will have a reversal possibility with the upside. Um, the Based upon the prior supports and resistance, you can see the uh, quick snapshot here. Uh, we can see the earliest support is 17.88. Uh, followed by 16.20 and the upside resistance is 19.48 followed by the next resistance is at 22.23 uh, This is from the technical source now come to the financial analysis, which is which is the main uh, analysis that I'm really interested I'm really interested in uh, in when I look at a company so that I want a company with a low debt to capital uh, this company has about 50% um, which which I would like to be less than 20% but if it is not the case, I like I generally look at uh, the car, the competition or the peers, and definitely I like to have a company uh, under 50% for sure. Um, so this is neither good nor the, neither bad, but it is neutral. Um, but when it comes to current assets to current liability, they are at 2.8, which is very good. This company can run uh, without any problem in the short term. Uh, price to earnings for current is seven, which. Uh, which you, which when is compared to its comp competition is fairly uh, same levels except Cisco which is at 27. Again, as I mentioned, Cisco is holds about 90% of the market share in uh, distribution, uh, food distribution. So their uh, diluted EPS growth is very good. This is uh, this probably uh, due to the pandemic and restructuring and probably Amazon's involvement. But this is a recent trend. You can see the diluted EPS growth of 603.2%. Uh, before that, it is fairly close to um, single digits. Now comes to the valuation. So uh, I mainly rely on uh, the DCF discount cash flow models with EBITDA multiples uh, for 10 years and five years. I do look at discount uh, dividend models. Uh, but before I rely on the overall average from all the models, which uh, which is what I get from um, uh, Finbox, which is the service that I use, these low and high values for EBITDA multiple gives a very good uh, risk and reward uh, spectrum. So you can see it is fairly um, close to its low uh, with a very good high po uh, upside potential in uh, 10 years based upon the current growth expectations and EBITDA multiples. Um, the same goes with the overall valuation averages from different models. There are P multiples, uh, there is a, uh, equity waterfall where, where you would basically look at the historic um, uh, EBITDA percentage and use that to project uh, uh, enterprise value. Uh, and then uh, based upon the enterprise value uh, and the number of shares, you would arrive at uh, stock price. Um, from different valuation models, you get different numbers. So you, if you take average, approximate average, you will get this number, which is 23, which is roughly about 20% upside, which is, which is a good target that I aim for. 
Um, in ROEs, uh, return on equity is about 9%. This is probably in the range for the grocery business. ROC is 7%, 7.2%, which is fine. It is probably in the short run uh, because you can see it, it has been up and down uh, in the last couple of years. Uh, maybe re the current restructuring and the involvement of Amazon uh, for expansion will help this. But this company is fairly cheap in terms of price to book. Uh, the book value uh, is, less, is actually more than the price that you pay. From the risk aspect, um, it is very low risk. Even if the company is liquidator, you should be getting close to what you pay for the stock price. Price to sales, uh, again, it's, it seems the price is very low. They should be able to at least uh, make their stock price just from 10% uh, of the sales. Definitely, it is not a uh, direct indicator for valuation, but when you compare to peers, they are at they are at cheaper valuations for price to sales. Dividend yield is 4%, which is very good for a long-term hold. Um, and this is another thing that I really uh, go into the details when it comes to uh, ass assets or the book value. There is a part of the valuation, um, part of the real value on the balance sheet is coming from goodwill. The goodwill is an indirect indication that the company can make uh, future earnings. Uh, or actually, it, it comes to the balance sheet just because uh, when you acquire a company at a premium based upon its future earnings, um, other than their basic assets, that is what the goodwill. It gets added to your uh, company balance sheet. And uh, periodically, you will reevaluate this goodwill by your overall company future earnings potential. Um, and then if you believe this goodwill is too high, you remove it and you take a cut on your balance sheet as well as your uh, you write off some debts. So, not going to the details, having a lower percentage of goodwill to assets is good from um, the valuations point of view. It not necessarily indicate that it will have a very good growth, but just from a valuations point of view, it is, it is good to get at a very low price from a tangible assets, which are like um, machinery, buildings and stuff. So, from the assets, when you take out the goodwill, the stuff it is easily liquidated. You can make the money out of it if you want to shut down the company. So I want to see this uh, lower number, um, and I 13% at a book value of 90% uh, uh, of uh, is very cheaply priced. And then uh, I look at diluted uh, share growth or reduction. This is an indirect indication that company is trying to uh, put the money back into the shareholders. So one way to do that is to give dividend periodically. The other one is to reinvest in the company to increase their asset value. That will indirectly reflect in stock uh, stock price, even with the existing shares at the constant uh, constant number. But sometimes if they don't find other options uh, good enough, and if the market is reacting poorly for the stock price, then the company can use the extra cash to buy back the stocks. So that way they will reduce the number of stocks and per stock earnings will increase. And if you maintain the PE constant, then your price will increase. That is the basic analogy here. So you can see the profile here, diluted uh, weighted average, diluted shares. They are on a declining path, which is a very good uh, indication that the stock price will be maintained at this level or it can continue to grow. So with that, uh, here is a summary. This is a very low risk, long-term hold business, and it has a brand value and historic presence in uh, certain uh, states of uh, United States. It has a good PE multiple with the, uh, uh, with a good support for EP, uh, earnings per share growth in the near term future. And I invest in two types of the companies. One is based upon uh, undervaluation, uh, and then I do the swing when the valuation reaches its fair value. Uh, but sometimes I hold the company for long. If the valuation keep uh, continues to grow or the expectation is continues to grow, just because the EPS uh, right now with which we have done the valuation has uh, increased beyond the valuation that we expected. So at any case, I generally target for 20% return uh, in my investment um, in uh, in a short term to one year range. But 
if I want to hold a company for 10 years and then still don't worry about its business, this is probably one of the company. And uh, it has a good potential for a higher price to earnings multiples in the future. And it also has a potential for earnings growth that will leave you with a very good price to earnings um, in the future, will leave, will leave you with good price um, and uh, great upside potential. I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, I hope you enjoy the content. I'm going to leave this uh, uh, leave this information uh, on Google Sheets. I'll leave a I'll leave a link at the bottom of this video. Please check it out. And if you have any comments, please leave a comment below. And um, that I hope this information will save you some time, and hopefully save you dollars.